Coming up on this episode of Timberwolves Weekly, we'll recap a busy but successful week on the field for Northwood. We'll tell you about all the home events we have coming up this weekend. And we'll recap the Athletes of the Week, who are also the Athletes of the Week from the conference. Timberwolves Weekly starts right now. Hello everyone, I'm Travis McCurdy, your host, and welcome to the fourth episode of Timberwolves Weekly. We're coming to you from Dean Field on the campus of Northwood University on another beautiful evening. The football team played their lone non-conference game of the season last Saturday at McKendry. It was a game Northwood led for the most part. Let's see how the Timberwolves came out at the end. We pick things up late in the first quarter. Mark Morris with a fake on the option. He'll come right side. This is a 31-yard run that sets Northwood up at the 11-yard line of McKendry. Very next play, Luke Schaefer had a career day for the Timberwolves. His run to the right goes 11 yards for a touchdown. Later on now, this is fourth and four. Mark Morris finds David Kalanick. This is a 15-yard gain and a first down. Three plays later, Morris will drop back, throw it up for Theron Wilson, who makes a leaping catch in the side of the end zone. That 10-yard touchdown made it 14-0 Northwood. McKendry on the drive now, and Cody Knoll is going to step up with a big play here, this sack on defense. Later on now, Morris throws left side. He finds Wilson again. This is a 26-yard gain. A little swing out pass by McKendry here. Cody Elwanger is going to force the fumble. Mike Fisher recovers it. That's Fisher's second fumble recovery on the day for Northwood. Late in the game now, this is Morris rolling to his right. He finds Sharon Barron wide open in the end zone, an 18-yard touchdown, but it's not enough. As two late touchdowns by McKendry give the Bearcats a 27-24 win over Northwood. Northwood now 1-2 and two on the season. That was a tough one for the football team. Northwood led the vast majority of that game, but came up just a little bit short. Northwood does return home for the first time since the opener this Saturday against Wayne State at 1 o'clock. Love to see you out at Hant Stadium. We're here at the soccer field right now, and there was a busy week of games last week here at Dean Field. Four games, two for the men, two for the women. Men's team took on Walsh and Malone. Let's see how Doug Carter's team did last week. Smith sends it in. Good ball, loose ball, and it's a goal! Joey Sensoni with the goal, and the Timberwolves are on the board first. This has got some space, can he keep it in play? Really well done there by Adam Thomas keeping this in play. Now Northwood's got danger. What a goal by the Timberwolves! Oh my goodness, James DeCosmo off a beautiful feat by James Vaughn. What a goal that was for the and coming to Northwood for years. This is a good looking ball. Played on and that's gonna go in for a goal. Wow. What a play. A shot and a goal. A butte by King Levick again. Similar strike to his goal against SVSU. And now it is fancy footwork by Dom. Sends it in, but it is, <laughs> folks, I could not believe that is in the net. That is another goal for Northwood. That's probably the worst goal call I'm going to have in my life. Goal scored by four, Dom, Dom Hart with the goal, the defender. Back to Bacos. Bacos into the area. It's a header and a goal. Another goal for the Timberwolves. That one, I believe, is going to go to Keaton Lovick, his second of the game. And it's 6-1 now to 7-1. And he eventually does. <laughs> wow, what a crazy play that was. So he shot it off the post. The keeper kept it out. But Nugent sends it in. Olafleco with another goal. Another header goal for Olafleco. His second goal in the last few moments. And now it's 8-1 to one, Northwood. Corner of the day for the Timberwolves. Nugent sends it deep. Lawson back in the area. DeCosmo <laughs> heads it in, and that makes it 9-1. So Northwood dominates the action in a 9-1 win over Walsh. The nine goals are the most the Timberwolves have ever scored against a Division II opponent. Northwood outshot the Cavaliers 27-6 and held an 8-1 advantage in corners. 
Northwood scored four goals in the first half and five in the second half to complete the victory over the Cavaliers. Then on Sunday, the Timberwolves took on Malone, and that's Adam Thomas with his second goal of the year in the 14th minute, putting Northwood on top 1-0. Last minute of play in the first half, this corner comes in, and Maiwa Ofiko will tap it in for his fourth goal of the year that made it 2-0 at the break. Second half action coming up here. Northwood still on top 2-0. Dom Hart sends it into the area, and it's headed in by... James DeCosmo for his fourth goal of the year in the 57th minute. That made it 3-0. Nice little move here by Andrew Nugent to his left and finds the back of the net. First goal of the season in the 79th minute. Olfico will add his fifth later on in the final moments of the game, but Northwood, another easy win, 5-0 over Walsh. The Timberwolves improve to 3-1 on the season with the victory. Really dominating performances for Doug's team out here at Dean Field, outscoring the opposition 14-1 to in two games. Northwood now having won two in a row and now 3-1 and one on the season overall. They return home big games this week, Tiffin and Finley here at Dean Field on Friday and Sunday. Women's team also had their home openers this weekend. The Timberwolves faced Walsh on Friday and Ohio Dominican on Saturday. Let's see how Dean Pappas' team did to open conference play. Flores now takes it away. She's in pretty good position. Good footwork by Flores. She fires a shot and it's a goal! Jessica Flores with a long range strike and the Timberwolves are on the board first. King still with it. Into the area. And it's shot and a goal! Jessica Flores with her second goal of the game. And the Timberwolves, their first opportunity in an long time ends up in the back of the net and T-Wolves are back on top two to one gives Northwood a two to one lead all in the area still no shot another goal the Timberwolves now make it three one on a loose ball out front off a corner that goal is going to go to Esser Northwood picked up the big win despite allowing a late goal. 3-2 over Walsh to open conference play. Jessica Flores with two goals. Jessica Esser with the game-winning goal. Julie Shields picks up the win in net with six saves. Final stats are pretty close. Walsh outshot Northwood 10-8 while Northwood finished with a 4-2 advantage in corner kicks. Timberwolves were not as fortunate on Sunday against Ohio Dominican as the Panthers came out fast, scoring four goals in the opening half en route to a 5-0 win over Northwood. Julie Shields had four saves in the game. ODU with a 21-7 advantage in shots, while Northwood with a 5-2 edge in corners. So 1-1 one one to start the GLIAC schedule for Dean Pappas' Northwood women's soccer team. The Timberwolves are back in action this week with a pair of road games. It was a busy week for Northwood athletics overall. Let's take a look and see how the teams did last week. Good start for the Northwood volleyball team in conference play. They went 2-1 and one on their UP trip. Northwood picked up a big road win at Northern Michigan to start the weekend 3-1 before falling at undefeated Michigan Tech 3-0. Northwood then responded with a 3-0 win over Lake Superior State, so the Timberwolves are 2-1 and one in the GLIAC to open the season. Krista Kramer, Allison Getty, nearly identical stats for the week. 3.0 kills each. Kramer with 3.3 points per set, while Dick Getty at 3.25. Northwood pretty solid offensively for the week, hitting 234. Good week for Northwood women's tennis. The Timberwolves went 3-0 for the week. We mentioned last week that the Timberwolves beat Fair State 7-2, and then they followed that up with 9-0 wins over Michigan Tech and Lake Superior State. The Timberwolves went 8-1 in doubles and 17-1 in singles for the week, so really dominating the play overall. Timberwolves on the year, as you can see, 13-5 and five in doubles and 29-7 and seven in singles. Northwood now 5-1 and one in GLIAC play. Men's golf team opened up their 2015-16 campaign with a big second-day performance to move up four spots and place fourth at the GLIAC North Invitational. Northwood was eighth after the opening round after shooting 304, but moved all the way up to fourth thanks to a solid 292 in the second round. Corey Roberts, with his debut at Northwood, placed 14th overall at 146. Matt Benson and Paul Otsby finished at 148 and 150, respectively. The cross-country teams competed at the Spartan Invite on Friday. The event hosted by Michigan State is one of the biggest races Northwood will compete in this season, with over 300 runners running in both the men's and women's race. 
On the women's side, Jenny Franz led the way once again. She's been the Timberwolves' top finisher in all the races so far this season, 85th overall with a time of 24.02. Emily Murdoch, 179th with a time of 26.08. On the men's side, Sammy Tuani was 107th overall to lead the way for the Timberwolves. He's also been Northwood's top finisher in all of the races thus far this season. This time, his time was 27.17. And the other top finisher, Josh Plitschke, 135th overall, 27-35 for the freshman. Overall, not a bad week for the Timberwolves as the teams combined to go 8-3 and three overall between all the fall sports teams. So congratulations to everyone on a good week. If there was ever a time if you wanted to come to Northwood to see a variety of teams play here on campus, this is the weekend to come up as volleyball, men's soccer, and football are all home this upcoming weekend. Let's take a look at all the upcoming events for this week in Northwood Athletics. As you can see, a busy week of events kicks off on Friday. The women's tennis team will compete at the ITA Regional at Indianapolis. That's Friday through Sunday. The first home event of the weekend is Friday at 2 o'clock against Tiffin. Later that evening, volleyball will host Hillsdale in their home opener. That's at 7 o'clock in the Hawk Center. Also at 7 o'clock on the road, women's soccer will play at Ashland. And the women's golf team will begin competition at the GVSU Invitational. That's a Saturday-Sunday event. On Saturday, the football team will host Wayne State at 1 o'clock. Volleyball is also home that day. That match is against Finley at 5 o'clock. Sunday at noon, men's soccer returns home for another match. That's against Finley at noon. Women's soccer is at Lake Erie at noon as well. While the men's golf team will open competition at the NCAA Regional, that's Monday and Tuesday. Should be a lot of fun this weekend, a lot of great events coming up. That men's soccer game against Tiffin on Friday is a huge battle between two of the top teams in the league. Volleyball with their home opener on Friday night, and then of course the football game at Saturday at 1 o'clock against Wayne State. Love to have everybody come on out, should be a lot of fun. Now we're going to announce our Athletes of the Week. Pretty simple choices this week. On the women's side, our honoree was named the GLIAC Women's Tennis Player of the Week. And on the men's side, he was named the GLIAC Defensive Player of the Week in men's soccer. Here's your Athletes of the Week. Our Women's Athlete of the Week is Carol Arnez Mercado from the Northwood Women's Tennis Team. She posted a 6-0 combined record at the top of the lineup for the Timberwolves, leading Northwood to a 3-0 team record. She went 3-0 at number one singles, winning the final six sets she played in. Arnez Mercado then teamed with Ana Anasquina to go 3-0 at number one doubles. On the year, Arnez Mercado has gone 9-3 overall. She's 4-2 at number one singles and 5-1 and at number one doubles. Northwood men's soccer captain Dominic Hart is the men's athlete of the week. He led the Timberwolves to a pair of easy home wins over Walsh and Malone. Hart anchored a defense that allowed one goal in two games. He played 175 of a possible 180 minutes overall in the two contests, helping Northwood outscore their opponents 14-1 overall. The Timberwolves also outshot their opponents 50-17. In addition, Hart added a goal and an assist for the Timberwolves on offense. Congrats to Dom and Carol, two great athletes, had a great week, well deserving of our Athletes of the Week. That's going to do it for this episode of Northwood Weekly. I'm Travis McCurdy. Make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and check out all of our videos on YouTube. I'm Travis McCurdy once again signing off. Keep fighting. Go mad.